Hey guys, how's it going? It's Constantine the Third here. So today we are going to be talking all about kiting. Kiting is probably one of the most difficult but most important skills for any ADC in League of Legends. A big part of how good an ADC is is determined by how good they are at kiting. No ADC in the game kites the same. Caitlyn has her net in traps, Ezreal has his arcane shift and slow from his iceborne gauntlet, Vayne has stealth tumbles and condemns, they all go about it differently. But before we go into how Vayne does it in particular, we need to talk about how you kite in general. So here's going to be Constantine's basic guide to kiting. This can be applied to pretty much ADC. You can sprinkle in their own little special mechanics if you understand it. But if you're a low elo player who wants to learn how to kite really, really well, this is the place you need to be. So for those of you that don't know, what is kiting? To quote my homeland of Mobifier, kiting refers to attacking an enemy with ranged attacks or abilities while maintaining a safe distance. So basically, for Vayne, you auto-attack, you run away, you auto-attack, you run away. But why is this so important? Why am I putting so much significance on kiting? Constantine, aren't there more important things for Vayne to worry about in the game? Hell fucking no is what I say to that. Besides CSing, kiting is probably the most important thing. Here's why. Number one, you ever think about how good Jax... Fiora, Renekton, Master Yi are, are in silver and bronze. You ever wonder about that? The reason why they're so good is because people who are good at kiting don't exist in those leagues. Silver and bronze players do not have the mechanics to kite those melee characters. So if you're a silver or bronze ADC and you can get good at kiting, you will destroy these traditional hyper carries in low ELO, which is awesome. Why? Because if you kite properly, they can never hit you. They can't stick on you to do enough damage to kill you. And because you're not getting one shot, and because you're kiting properly, you're going to do a lot more damage because you'll live longer. Which is fucking sweet. And also, on top of crushing Master Yi, on top of putting out mad DPS, it also lets you reposition. When you're kiting, you are actively moving your position from one spot to another. So if you engage in a duel of fates between you, Smexy Master 420, versus the nefarious Trindaderp, you will be able to move away from the encroaching enemy team toward your own team. And what's going to happen? If he wants to keep fighting you and you're kiting properly, he's going to have to follow you into your team. He's moving to the wrong side of the fight. You're safer, he's in more danger, win-win. Don't worry about kiting ranged champions like AD carries and mages. Instead, focus on dodging their skill shots and stunning them to a wall, if it's a 1v1. But if there's a melee character involved, you always want to kite that melee character and kill them first, because it turns out, kiting is a pretty safe way to kill people. Because they can't hit you, but you can hit them. Alright, so how do we actually do this now that we know we want to do this? Because education is key. You know you want it, here's how you get it. Number one, you may be thinking to yourself, Constantine, the way I kite people is that when I'm running away, I right-click on them. What the fuck did you just say to me, you motherfucking piece of shit? No. 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 Don't. Don't do that. Allow me to propose a thought experiment to you. Let's say you were in a situation where you were kiting someone. You got your dub step going, you got your wub step going, you got your porn step going, and you're feeling great, and all of a sudden Renekton jumps on you, and your your mechanics are like a flowing river. You are Gosu incarnate, and you're right-clicking on him, and you're right-clicking behind you, and you're right-clicking on him, and you're right-clicking on him, and you right-click on the ground, and then you and then you run into the enemy team. And then you run into the enemy team because you clicked on the ground and you kill yourself. Because you were right click kiting. Nobody, except for Faker, has a hundred percent right click accuracy. You will sometimes accidentally hit the ground and you will die because of it. You know? You know what doesn't kill you? When you misclick the ground? A-clicking. A-clicking doesn't do that. Let's talk about A-clicking. On a serious note, I understand why many people are turned off from A-clicking. Because unlike right-clicking, you actually have to hit a button on your keyboard, then left-click where you want to auto-attack them, and then switch to a right-click to go behind you. But believe me, every single pro does this, every single good player does it, it is by far undisputably the best method of kiting people, hands down. 
One, it is very forgiving if you misclick. If you accidentally A-click the ground, you're just going to auto-attack something. It's actually going to do what you intended it to do. You won't even notice that you misclicked, and then you can just keep kiting. Number two, and this is kind of a weird one that most people don't think about, you don't need to move your mouse as far away from your character to A-click. Right-clicking, you actually have to move your mouse to the person that you're auto-attacking, then move it in front of you, which actually takes a lot longer than you might initially think. Milliseconds, sure, but milliseconds can make a difference. A-clicking, you just need to click, like, slightly behind you. So, watch the video for a video demonstration. But, to reinforce this through audio, what you do is, number one, you hit the A key. It is below the Q key, above the Z key, and to the left of the S key. And I think the caps lock is on the right. It's on the right, I confirmed it. Then, you left click near or on the target you wish to auto-attack. Then, you move your mouse in the direction you wish to run, and then right-click there. You continue to run, not attempting to turn around and fire your auto-attack again at the person until you know you can fire it again. Otherwise, Vane will turn around and give a stern look at her foe and stand there. So make sure you actually have a crossbow bolt armed before you try to A-click. Otherwise, she's not going to do jack shit. How do you know when she's going to be rearmed? Just takes practice. Then, after you fire your second auto attack, you are going to just do the same thing over and over and over again. You're seeing how it works in the video. Before you even attempt to do this, I want you to load up into a game, a custom game, or a bot game with no opponents. I want you to hit the escape key. And I want you to go under the game tab. You're going to scroll all the way down that game tab. And you're going to find an option. That option has a label. And that label reads, Enable attack move on cursor. What does this magical option do? I have no fucking idea. Basically, it's going to attack whether is closest to the place you A left clicked on, rather than what's closest to your champion. So if you're, like, trying to kite someone through a minion wave, it's going to attack the champion that's closest to your A left click, rather than the minion that's next to you. It just makes sure you don't accidentally auto-attack a ward in a team fight or something. It's really not that important, but, you know, I kind of like it and I find it useful, so I highly recommend it. So yeah, like I said, this is just the fundamentals of kiting, but Q, your tumble. It's an auto-attack reset. You can use it to cancel the reload time when Vayne would be sternly glaring at her opponent to rearm a bolt instantly and fire it at them for bonus damage. It's a pretty handy-dandy skill. In team fights, you should save it for special stealth jukes and such, but we're not going to talk about that because it's really complicated, so we're going to move on. Some of you may be asking yourselves at this very moment, Constantine, I've been playing this game for a while, and I feel like I'm really bad at kiting. How do I get better at it? How do you get better at playing the piano? How do you improve how much food you can eat in one sitting? How do you improve your endurance in the bed? No, it's actually not going to be a problem for any of you guys. How do you get better at kiting? You practice. You just do it a lot. And you understand the fundamental steps of how to do it. A. Left click on your target. Right click behind you. Wait for you to reload. A. Left click on the target. Right click behind you. Wait for you to reload. A. Left click on the target. It's muscle memory. Once you have that born into your skull, ingrained into your very soul, on your deathbed, someone could hand you a mouse and a laptop and you could kite a Hecarim. That's what we're striving for. We're looking for pure muscle memory. So yeah, if you just do it a lot, you'll get really good at it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, here's a really good example of me kiting a Zin Zhao really well. And yeah, I did it. So let's watch it and talk about how I done did it. Alright, so here's example number one. It's me, level 10 Vayne, versus him, level 11 Zin Zhao. So let's watch this play, first off, standard Constantine style, and talk about what happened in it. Alright, some fancy schmancy kiting right there. Nothing too impressive, but, you know, I picked a basic clip because this is a basic strategy. So... I actually want to turn down the sound in case you guys can't hear me. So, um, let's start off at the beginning of this point. I'm going to slow it way down so we can really take in all the details. So, number one, I see Zin coming at me. He ghosts. I'm like, shit. 
it's on, boy. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to immediately be thinking about how am I going to keep this guy away from me? Well, the first thing that I do is I turn and I fuck up and I auto-attack for no reason. That was dumb. But then he jumps on me, and I'm noticing that he's right next to a wall. So immediately, stealth tumble out. He can't see me. Actually, let's go to his vision real quick. Uh, no, fog of war. Oh, I'm in tower range. Oh, that's most unfortunate. Anyway, I think he can't see me, and then I auto him once and then pin him to the wall. Condemn doesn't have any uh, overlap animation with auto attack, so you can get a free auto attack and condemn at the same time. So then I pin him to the wall, and notice I don't waste any time. I immediately A, left click, run away. A, left click, run away. A, left click, run away. And as soon as I see him break the stun, we'll talk about this more. I was saving my tumble the whole time. It's normally on a two second cooldown. Over two seconds has passed, it was up, but I saved it explicitly so I could stealth tumble away from him. I should be out of tower vision range now. Good, so he can't see me. He doesn't actually know where I am. So I'm going to be stealth tumbling down because he's going to be thinking that I went this way because that was my trajectory the whole time. So I stealth tumble down, and that causes him to miss. So then I get one last auto attack. And again, you can see I'm still running away, still kiting, still A left clicking. But then he gets to knock up, and I'm like, shit. So I flash behind him, because this would put me in tower range. He doesn't expect it, so he runs the wrong way. And then I stealth tumble once, and I finish him off. So what is the lesson we can learn from this? You always want to be moving away from your target. You never want to waste any time, but you also don't want to cancel any auto attacks, and you don't want to wait too long before firing one auto attack. Try to stun people with Condemn as much as possible, but if you can just use E to knock people away, that's fine too. Do everything in your power to keep them away at max distance, and just A, left click, A, left click, A, left click. But everything in there is said about stealth, tumbling, juking, all of that, next episode coming up real soon. But this was just a basic video, so a basic play. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope this made sense. If you have any questions about my settings, how I do anything, please feel free to leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, take it easy, and have a good one.